So this short video is about ethical practice in early years and it's based on the UK uh, code of ethics that's produced by um, early education. Um, so as you may already know, that document uh, that we just looked at, the Code of Ethics, is actually split into eight sections. It's ethics in relation to the work that we do as ch with the children directly. And that's what we're going to be focusing on, that first section um, in this short video. There's also a section on the work that we do in relation to families, another section in relation to communities, a section for employers, a section for working with colleagues, a section for working with students, um, and for uh, conducting research. But what we're going to be looking at now in the video is um, ethical practice in the context of working directly with the children. So the very first thing that the this document tells us is that the, um, the ethical considerations that we need to work with when we're thinking about our work with children is based on children's rights. So the UN um, National Conventions on the Rights of the Child, 91, that sets out the foundation of um, what forms the code of ethics when we're thinking about the work that we do um, with children. It goes on to talk about the importance of recognising and respecting the individual qualities um, and the potential of every child. That is our role as early years practitioners, our ethical code to make sure that ourselves and the people that we're working with are able to respect and value uh, children's differences. Um, also understanding the vulnerability of children and understanding that children are dependent on adults. That understanding of that relationship is part of the ethical, um, the ethical code that, that has been laid down for early years in the UK. Um, to help children understand that they're global citizens with a shared responsibility for environment and humanities and think about how that can translate into our work with the very youngest children, with naught to threes, for example, how we can lay those seeds as part of our ethical framework. Um, ethically, it's our responsibility to create and maintain healthy environments where um, children's development, healthy development, physical, emotional, cognitive, is not just respected, but um, is built so that they can flourish developmentally within the environments that, that we create. Um, respecting relationships between children and families and acknowledging that relationships within all of our interactions with children. That's also a key part of the ethical framework. Um, ensuring that children and their families with special needs uh, have access um, to early years services and appropriate support services so that they can fully access um, provision in a way that meets their developmental um, needs. So number eight on the uh, ethical code of conduct that relates specifically to working with children is about ensuring that each child's culture, language, ethnicity and family structure are acknowledged and valued. That's part of our ethical code of conduct when we're working in the early years. So think about the ways that you can do that as an early years practitioner. For example, it might be having a family photo on the wall of every single family in the early years provision, showing that you give equal value to each family structure, whether it's a single parent, a gay parent, a, a, um, gay parenting, um, etc. And um, 
thinking about communities and children's backgrounds how do you draw that in to your everyday practice as an early years practitioner there's ways to do it celebrating festivals or learning about festivals from their culture inviting people in from um the families that you have to show how we do it at home um Another key part of the uh, code of conduct when we're thinking about um, ethics um, for working with children is about advocating us as adults, advocating for the children's right to play and learn in an environment that meets um, their needs, both children with and without disabilities. Um, it's really important that we provide all children with a language that they know, as well as supporting children in their development, not just of their home, lang home language, but also of English. Now, obviously that's particularly relevant if you're following the early years foundation stage and you're based in the UK, or you're based in an English speaking early years provision. Okay. And the last kind of part of this uh, code of ethics that relates specifically to working with children is about ensuring that children are not discriminated against on the basis of gender, age, ability, economic status, family structure, we've already talked about lifestyle, ethnicity, relig religion, language, culture, or national origin. So these things that I've spoken about specifically form the code of ethics that we need to be working with and that the notions and ideas behind what I've discussed should come through all of the work that we're doing in learning, in care, in personal routines, in communicating with families, in communicating with other professionals within the workplace and the community. So it is important that you do have a read of that code of ethics and familiarise yourself with that because everyone working in an early years setting should be familiar with the code of ethics and know and understand how to apply that to your work.